gentlemen, and of course our music troops, our security, and uh, other players who have made this day a success. Before I go to the formal speech, I would want to give you gazetted assurance that we are organized. That's not in doubt. And we are touching the ordinary Ugandan who gives the vote. That's where we are targeting. We are not going to so many protocols. We reach where the ordinary Ugandan gives the vote. The people I called here are people who reach the ordinary Ugandan. I give you my assurances that we are doing the right job and we shall get there and you will tell the observer. Maybe I should also tell you why we chose today. Still among us, very many inconveniences. Why did we choose today? We chose today because today is the youth day. The day when 9.8 million Ugandans who vote and choose leadership of the Republic of Uganda are being celebrated and remembered and recognized. So I want to tell you that we chose it deliberately with all the inconveniences that this was the right day and we therefore pronounce ourselves categorically and strictly to the youth of the Republic of Uganda and we shall give them sufficient attention as the case so requires. Why the orange color? This orange color actually is supposed to be the Dutch orange. The Dutch orange is one of the orange colors that I once used when I formed the first political party called Progressive Alliance Party. Secondly, this is a color of revolution. I'm sure all of you know the orange, but it's a color of revolution. It's a color that has caused change. It's a color that has driven change. It's a color that has achieved change. That's why we use the orange color. Why a renewed Uganda? I do not want to be one of those who imagine that nothing has been done in this country. Something has been done, but the revolution lost its way. And we are here to put the revolution back on the right lane. And that's why for us in our thinking and proper appreciation of the situation, we shall only renew the situation. We shall not necessarily invent the creation. So a renewed Uganda is because we appreciate that something has been and I've been part of that, has been done, and I've been part of those who did what has been done. The other points I raise in the main speech. Why Chisoboka? Most Ugandans have an impression that nothing can be done to change this situation. I'm not one of those. And for all of you who are lining up in this new, renewed Uganda, in this direction that I keep showing you, straight, forthright, and forward moving, I want to give you every confidence that we can indeed change this situation. Come 2021, despite all the pressures we are going to do, scientific elections, I have every belief, except if we find that we cannot operate at all. If we, give, we are given the thin lines of operation, I want to inform all of you that we shall come together and cause change. Any one of you who doubts it, today is the day. Join the renewed Uganda without any hesitation that we can actually cause change in this country. We've been reversing ourselves and doing ourselves. Continuing to give little faith to the people who lead us, I mean who we lead. I want to emphasize today that all of you, as you stand up to offer leadership in this new right, make sure you, as a political leader, you do right things. You do not do things right. You do right 
things so that we don't have excuses of tomorrow of having to explain ourselves when actually what was supposed to write ceases even to appear right. Now, lastly, in this general remarks before I go to the main speech, I want you to continue with your desire. You don't have to shout. You don't have to fight on the streets. Get down, reach the people. We've been using it from the reports I'm receiving from all of you and from the counter checks I've been making. I am not doubting in any way that we are likely to shock very many people in the coming many months. Do stick to your design. Do stick to your design. The other point that I cannot leave without mentioning are the people we put in front of you here. I know you wanted to see professors. We have them. Actually, some of them must be amongst you. You wanted to listen to philosophies. Philosophies have always been there. What has not been present is that you do not communicate to the masses that actually matter, the masses that need your services most. You do not communicate to the masses that matter. You do not communicate to the masses who you purport to offer services, who are the larger majority, and as far as I'm concerned, I will give focus, attention, precision of attention to the young people of Uganda, to the women of Uganda, and to the disadvantaged Ugandans. That's why I can afford space on my launching day to a border border man, because he needs us. He needs us. He needs us. I want to raise something about the women. In the larger statement, I'll say something about them. I lost my mother, my father, in 1964. I have largely depended on my mother and my sister. And I'm a lawyer, and I'm a Ugandan of distinguished integrity. Do not underscore the role of women. I want to ask all of you, we don't have to highlight it the way people do it for purposes of politics. For me, I feel it. I have lived it. I know what it means to have the favor and care of a woman who sometimes is running everything on, his own, on her own. These women you always call women. They are women of different categories. Single mothers, widows, Women with a disability, women who cannot put lunch on a table, women who, for example, command 10 orphans, orphans, those women must always attract your attention when we are mobilizing for this group. Those women, do not forget them, because they matter most. I want to read an official statement just to be on record. Fellow Ugandans, fellow countrymen and women, I would like to start by thanking God for bringing us this far and for allowing us an opportunity to witness the changes in our country and for the opportunity to make a contribution in our respective capacities and capabilities. In our respective capacities and capabilities. More than ever before, since independence, a moment has come that requires us to mobilize ourselves into a corrective force to shape the future and destiny of our nation. Corrective force to shape the future and the destiny of our nation. This job should be, no longer be any person's job. It is the job of every Ugandan. It should never be of anybody else except yourself. A collective responsibility to change Uganda and take it where we want it. The need to address the issue of a peaceful transition cannot be overemphasized. We always talk about transition, transition, transition. For me and our group, we want to give it special status in our programs 
and I want to advise every Ugandan to give sufficient attention to this. A transition not in the narrow interpretation of changing leadership from the incumbent to another person. No. But the big agenda that will enable Ugandans migrate from the traditional partisan discourse of fixed positions to one of enhanced political inclusiveness. Enhanced political inclusiveness. A transition from a nature based to a modern industrial knowledge based economy with equitable access to resources and opportunities. <laughs> Kadiwani ti 